My Irresistible Ex is a romance, and I use that term loosely, webtoon about a supposedly irresistible ex-husband that tries to get his wife back. And it sucks. Alright boys, time for a quick lesson. In South Korea lies a massive media industry that is best described as the dollar store version of the Japanese media industry. Whereas Japan is renowned for their birthing of the ever influential anime industry, South Korea is renowned for their really, really bad K-dramas and K-romances that prey on the emotional instability and hormonal imbalances that their target demographic of stupid preteen girls with no understanding of relationships all have. And naturally, some of these awful Korean dramas and romances inspire budding creators to make bad comics. This is one of them. My Irresistible Ex is essentially a manhwa adaptation of a generic K-drama. And Boys, all jokes and snarky remarks aside, if you told me to sit down and write an entire bullet point checklist of every single thing wrong with the romance section of Webtoon as a whole, then this would be the unholy comic version of it, hands down. Emotionally unstable leads, creepy unrequited love, glamorizing stalkers, and it goes on and on. Webtoon is a notoriously bad place to look for actual content. It's very common knowledge that the platform is just one big big f***ing joke. And the reason why is because of crap like this. And before you start complaining in the comment section about how there are good webtoons out there and then you start typing out an awkward list of stuff you like, yes, I know, there is some good stuff on webtoon. Obviously I'm not saying there isn't. But the issue is that in order to find one good webcomic to read, you have to sift through a colossal pile of digitally drawn shovelware like this. As I kept reading this garbage, there were so many of the most basic horrendous tropes of a bad romance in this story that I actually did just sit down and write an entire checklist of all of it. And the reasons why this is the ultimate example of why nobody takes Webtoon as a platform seriously ever. So as I review and narrate everything that happens, I will jot down and show you every single solitary reason available. Let's begin. But first, one important thing. This video is sponsored by Gaomon and their latest monitor drawing tablet. Yeah, that's right. I tolerated a bad comic for the sake of you guys' entertainment. You guys can tolerate a minute and a half worth of sponsorship. The Gaomon 1561 pen display is a sleek, lightweight, and powerful monitor tablet designed for top quality and ease of access. With an eight-tool set of adjustable side buttons, a tablet screen that is smooth as butter, a tablet pen that requires no batteries or charging, and a whopping 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, everything a proper digital artist needs to get the job done and done well is all perfectly contained in one top of the line digital art tablet. I myself like to draw for fun while I'm free of work on YouTube, and while I was originally kind of scared of having to draw on a brand new tablet after using my previous one since 2017, I was pleasantly surprised to see that I had nothing to worry about at all. The two most remarkable things about this product that I'd like to talk about is the ease of installation and how smooth the pen display is. The tablet package itself only has one single cable bundle of an HDMI, USB, and power supply that can be hooked up in mere minutes, and the display itself for the monitor tablet is covered in a premium screen film that smoothens your pen strikes against the tablet and makes your drawing experience legitimately feel like you're basically drawing on paper. This product has it all, and it all stands at the very low price of 290 bucks on Amazon, which is a total steal for the average price of a monitor tablet nowadays. So yeah, shop for the Gaomon 1561 pen display now. Now let's talk about why this comic sucks. Let's begin. We start off our epic tale by introducing our even more epic female lead, with a Korean name that I'm probably going to butcher here. I'm also probably going to butcher all these stupid Korean names, but let's be honest, who even gives a damn? Our main female lead is 28-year-old superstar actor slash philanthropist Young Sol Ha, whose introduction is essentially kissing her ass and worshipping her at every single turn. According to this comic, she is... <laughs> Truly the most perfect, the most perfect human being of this era? 
<laughs> okay, so that already immediately leads me to checkpoint number one on my list on why this is the ultimate embodiment of bad webtoon romances. Boring, one-note stock factory model personalities that fit the story's archetypes. While there is nothing wrong with making characters look supposedly perfect, the issue is that you aren't making your characters look like, well, you know, actual human beings as opposed to walking cliches or plastic ass dolls to perpetuate your fantasies. So yeah, uh, she's a fucking actor and she's all epic, but she's also super duper airheaded and all that generic protag shit. She intentionally has no personality and the reason why, of course, is because that will make it easier for the dumbass preteen girls that read the stuff to project themselves onto this main character. Oh yeah, also she's got like a manager and shit and she's like, super feisty and has to keep her in shape at all times. And that leads me to reason number two on my checklist, emotionally unstable females. And yeah, if I need to tell you what's wrong about emotional instability in a romance story that's supposedly about an irresistible ex, then I don't know why you're watching this video. They have a small dialogue while coming out of the bitch's high-rise luxury apartment or whatever because, well, apparently someone else is moving in right next door to her room. Uh, the young Saul girl stupidly says, Oh, I'm just wondering about the possibility that this new neighbor might be my soulmate. This is stupid. And and then the, the manager bitch gets up and says, uh, uh, well, as long as he's not like Yoon Jae. And then the fucking pink haired bitch young soul, she starts frowning because, whoa, you brought up a, a dark topic, bro. And then, yeah, uh, so yeah, that's basically the whole scene. So yeah, uh, ignoring that clunky foreshadowing and name dropping, we move on quickly because this bitch and the manager both have a lunch party or some shit because famous people do famous people stuff and yeah, whatever. During this party, young Sol is the epic center of attention. I mean, of course she is. Why wouldn't she be? <laughs> After all, she is tr <laughs> truly the most perfect human being of this era, right? Right, guy? <laughs> but yeah, during her walk to the party, she notices that someone she vaguely recognized was nearby, and upon panicking and trying to find out who it could have been, she finds him, and then begins her <gasps> fateful reunion with her former ex-husband. Oh no! And yeah, this motherfucker's name is uh, Yoon Jae? Yoon Jae? I don't know, Kore uh, maybe Korean pronunciation could be a little bit weird. Yoon Ji, Yoon Jae Jae, Jing Jong, Chicken Fried Rice, the generic, <laughs> the, gen <laughs> the generic male lead guy is supposedly the irresistible ex-husband at the title of the webtoon. This main character is also point number three on my list. Generic anime handsome men. Okay, boys, look. I'm not expecting intense amounts of originality from a basic bitch Korean drama, but even still, they could at least try mixing things up at least a little bit. Everything about this webtoon from the very first strips just radiates aggressive, aggressive amounts of basic bitch level shit. The estrogen bait title, the fantasy perpetuation of the main girl being the perfect human that the audience can project themselves onto, and then there's this new main guy, and then there's also this art style. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get to that. Listen, I really don't like taking shots at other people's artistic abilities. It's just something that I do not like doing, and I'm assuming that you guys do not either. However, I will say that this and damn near every other f***ing Korean webcomic, manhwa or whatever they're called, they all legit have this same ass generic pretty boy art style and assets for backgrounds. Like, uh, what the hell is happening in South Korea that they all look like this? They all have the same f***ing face. It's like every single person in South Korea went to the same Barnes and Noble and they all bought the same how to draw manga book on clearance sale for like three bucks. Okay, so, dead serious, I need to say this right now. For all my fellow creators out there who are artists, I want to make something very clear. You don't have to have a top quality, amazing art style. You do not. You should know the basics to a T, obviously, but you do not need to draw like effin' Pablo Picasso. What you need is to be unique. 
In this day and age where media is constantly being shoved down your throat, be it video games or movies or comics or TV shows, our attention span as media consumers is extremely short. So what you need to do is stand out. This is a comic I stumbled into called Song of the Winds. It was just recently published on Webtoon as of the time of this recording. Does this comic have super duper high quality realistic artwork? No. Does it need to be? Hell no, because it's unique. It stands out. You see what I'm talking about? The most important thing is to stand out in an oversaturated market. But yeah, let's get back on topic. After being totally shocked at the fact that her handsome, heartthrob ex-husband has returned, she is revolted and tries not to pay him any mind throughout the dumb party that she was in. Time passes and the party's over and she's just gonna move on with her life. Uh, they do have a small chat, the ex-husband and the pink hair girl, where they basically just show common courtesy and, and the pretty boy dude is like, Aren't you gonna ask me how I've been? And then she kind of just pisses off after that. She's in public, so she politely excuses herself, clearly not interested in speaking to this cuck. And now we pin another check mark on my list on why nearly all webtoon romances are terrible. Reason number four, unrequited love. Okay, so again, there's nothing inherently wrong with having a romance start off with unrequited affection, but within the context that this is a cookie cutter Korean drama, you can expect lots and lots of toxicity. Anyway, she goes off and speaks to the manager bitch and then she tells her that uh, her ex-husband has suddenly appeared and then she freaks out. But the pink hair girl is totally chill and she's just shrugging off that shit. She says, and I quote, I'm okay. It's just a coincidence after all. A coincidence. There's no way we'll meet again. And then in the very next panel, while she's accepting autographs at a stand or whatever, cause famous people stuff, this cuck has returned. And he wants an autograph from his ex-wife, I guess. This part of the story was clearly crafted for the sake of comedic effect, but if you're a normally functioning human being reading this garbage, as opposed to a stupid ass preteen girl, you'll just be annoyed at the fact that this author is trying to make a f***ing stalker look like a funny, whimsical ass thing that's so romantic. Which leads me to checkpoint number five on my list, romanticizing stalkers. Because as we all know, if it's a story about an ugly weirdo obsessed stalker, it's a horror flick. But if it's a handsome and attractive weirdo obsessed stalker, it's a fun and exciting romantic comedy. <sighs> In chapter 7, there's a stupid ass party. And for some ill contrived stupid ass reason, the stupid ass pretty boy stalker freak cuck lord husband is in the stupid ass party as well. Around this chapter, we get a brief flashback showing that the pretty boy guy is just uh, suddenly going back to the States. Why is he doing this? What is the reason? Why would he suddenly just abandon his wife for four years straight like that? The reason would have to be good, right? Well, probably not, because the comic never explains that anywhere around the beginning of the story. At all. Ever. Which is really stupid. Like, incredibly stupid. The ex-husband guy pulls up on the pink hair bitch and they have a minor altercation, where this dialogue occurs. You wanna start over? It's been four years since you left Yoonjae, but now you come back and want to start over? I tried for four long years, but I could not forget you. That's why I came back to Korea. To see you, Yun Sol. It is you who left. I know, I haven't forgotten. Then move. You already left me once. Who says you won't do it a second time? And that's all that happens. So, um, why doesn't this idiot just explain why he needed to abandon her for four years straight? No, no, seriously, that would instantly solve pretty much all of this comic's conflict. And you want to know something funny? That sentence that I just said? That basically answers my question. And that leads me to checkpoint number six on my list, dragging out drama for the sake of cheap entertainment. 
If this dumbass cookie cutter pretty boy just got up and immediately said what happened, then a lot of the melodrama wouldn't exist. You see, it's a lot more logical to simply have the conflict be instantly resolved by having generic pretty boy dude just explain why he needed to leave and be done with it. But it's a lot more entertaining to not explain at all so all the juicy, scandalous drama bits can happen. But here's the deal. This is the absolute dumbest reason for as to why drama would have to be perpetuated. The only reason why this story is going on and dragging out for as long as it is is because there isn't a single solitary character in this story that has decided to get up and just say, wait, why don't you just explain why you had to leave your wife, dude? If the conflict is this paper thin and easy to resolve, then why would you write it this way to begin with? Even the target demographic of dumbass preteen girls would instantly be able to look at this garbage and be like, wait, why don't they just communicate? Why don't they just explain why he suddenly left and abandoned her? But again, this story would not exist if that question was very quickly answered. So again, dragging out drama. So now, this comic, which is already embarrassingly generic and cliched as all f literally doesn't even make any sense. The only reason why this drama even exists is because one dumb motherfucker just won't explain why he needed to abandon his significant other. So now that we've established that this comic has all the logical stability of a house of cards standing on top of a moving tractor, let's continue with something I'm actually really interested in talking about. The pretty boy stalker guy continues to prey on her like a serial rapist. And while that alone is revolting enough, the excuses that the narrative provides that allow him to keep creeping on her is even more revolting. There are many, but we're only going to take a look at one of those excuses here. Okay, boys, this is a very interesting thing that I want to say here. I hope you guys are paying full attention to what I'm about to say because I'm about to create my own term in a second. Check this out. Okay, so, after the pink hair bitch pulls out of that stupid argument with the ex-husband guy, she takes a seat at an empty table, still bitter over the ridiculousness of pretty boy stalker's desires. How could he even possibly think about starting over? While she sits at the empty seat, who does she bump into? Well, this guy. A dumb, ugly, drunk, fat guy who's super hideous and stupid and unlikable. Boys, I want to put extra emphasis into this. Have you noticed that every single character drawn in the story so far has the pretty boy or Barbie doll girl look? Even elderly people all have the exact same effing face. Why is it that this guy is specifically drawn to be fat and ugly and dumb? Hmm, gee, I wonder why. Let's find out now and look at this scene here. Oh no! Where did everyone from this table go? You must be lonely sitting by yourself. You mind pouring me another? Oh man guys, this guy is such an dumb, ugly douchebag, guys. We hate this random character, right guys? How dare he expect the, <laughs> the, the perfect human being of this era <laughs> to fucking, uh, to, to pour him a drink like a plebeian servant. Unbelievable. And then it gets even more cringy because then the fat, ugly guy continues and then says, You know, drinks taste better when poured by a woman. Even better if it's a pretty one. Oh man, guys, we hate this character so much, right guys? He's such a sexist asshole, guys. He's such a douchebag, guys. Man, f*** this guy. I don't like this guy, guys. This guy's a douche. I can only imagine how scrumptious the drinks you pour will be, Yunseol. If only there was someone out there who would clearly show this guy who's boss. But that's okay, because then, badass dude appears to shut him the f*** up. Yeah! Someone snatches up the bottle to pour this fat motherfucker a drink, and who be it? The creepy stalker ex-husband guy, of course. He arrives on the scene, all heroic and shit, and is like, Yo, I'll pour you the director a drink. And then he pours that shit, right? He pours it, but then he fucking overpours that shit intentionally. Wow, that is so bad. <laughs> that is so badass. 
<laughs> That's so badass. What an alpha male, guys. This guy's so cool. This guy's so badass. We like him now, guys. He continues to epically overpour the fat, ugly guy his drink, which is displayed in this single frame of a thick stream of Mrs. Buttersworth maple syrup spilling all over this guy's hand. Damn, that's so badass. That's so awesome. And then the fat, ugly motherfucker gets butt hurt, right? And then the pink hair bitch just stares in stunned silence. He sure showed him, right guys? Pink hair girl walks away in silence, pretending to be annoyed, but deep down, she was so grateful for the creepy stalker ex-husband's help. Oh man, what a badass, what a real man. Y you know, you're a weirdo freak stalker, but it's okay for you to be a weirdo freak stalker because you're uh, protecting her and white knighting her like a man-child reddit simp or some bullshit. Yeah, you're so badass, bro. See guys? See guys? Look at this. It's okay for him to be a stalker. After all, he's not a sexist asshole. He's not as bad and creepy as all the other guys that constantly surround her. So that means it's okay for him to be a fucking creep. Okay, so you see all this? This is a very special occurrence that I've noticed in many forms of bad comics and stories. On top of this being checkpoint number seven on the list, this is also something that I've decided to classify as a term. It's called a moral scapegoat. A moral scapegoat is essentially a narrative workaround where you have one character that's a total piece of shit and an asshole and or a weirdo and instead of the author of the story acknowledging that and painting the character in a negative light because he is objectively a bad person, the author instead just twists the story around that horrible person and tries to paint said bad person in a positive light and or make said asshole character perform actions that that display that he or she is not totally morally deprived. And this scene right here is a perfect example of that. A fat, ugly, drunken asshole pulls up on a pretty girl and is like, ha ha, make me a sandwich and pour my drink, bitch. And then the creepy stalker cuck shows up and overpours the guy's drink and tells him to go fuck himself. Clearly, that's supposed to display to us, the readers, that, uh, y you know, oh, see, there's nothing wrong with him being a creepy stalker as long as you have standards, guys. See, look. It's okay for him to be a stalker. After all, he's not fat and ugly and drunk and sexist like this throwaway character, so it's a-okay. That is a moral scapegoat. Painting an objectively disgusting character in a positive light by making him or her perform actions that are not as morally deprived as other characters. Or making that character perform actions that clearly display that he slash she is not completely morally void. It's completely stupid, it's lazy ass writing, and it's embarrassing hackneyed trash. It is legit embarrassing if you have to twist everything around you in your narrative to make a single character look less bad. Oh yeah, and pretty boy Jing Jong Jae trying to white knight for pink hair girl is also a part of another checkpoint from my list that's in conjunction with the moral scapegoat point. Checkpoint number eight, validating alpha male quote unquote behavior. Yeah, I don't think I need to explain what's stupid about that. Moving on past this, I'm just gonna show you some random stuff that happens. In chapter 8, pink hair girl gets a random phone call from ex-husband stalker guy, after the stupid party where he gets white knighted from a fat bastard. Stalker ex-husband tries to woo pink hair girl. Stalker ex-husband fails. She tells him to piss off. In chapter 9, the morning after that, she leaves her friend's house after sleeping over to open the door and suddenly run into stalker ex-husband guy waiting right at the front of the door, speaking to her like it's nobody's business. Stalker ex-husband tries to woo pink hair bitch. He fails. Pink hair girl tells him to piss off. In chapter 11, <sighs> okay, I think you can see the formula here. Boys, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because I just want to say, you know, for a story called My Irresistible Ex, I'm not seeing a lot of irresistibility here. I'm mostly seeing a lot of degenerate creeper stuff. But oh, it's okay because, you know, like I said, his handsome good looks and charming personality and charisma will win her back no matter what. And that leads me to checkpoint number nine, validating creeps. 
Good job, Romance Webtoons, on continuing to delude young girls and boys that if you keep stalking and preying on someone you like, you'll eventually be able to get them, even if they objectively do not like you. What a fantastic message to teach your audience. Your audience of hormone-enraged teenagers, no less. Haha, <laughs> see? Look, kids. Girls aren't actually human beings. They're f***ing trophies to be collected. And if you're being nice to a girl like any normal person with common courtesy would, that means you're automatically entitled to that girl's vagina. <sighs> Look. I know that last part was kind of irrelevant, and I'm not trying to act like I'm an angel either, I'm not exactly a good influence myself, but I genuinely hate comics that validate this degenerate behavior. Look, I am not shitting on this webcomic for displaying a toxic romance. There is nothing wrong, I repeat, there is nothing objectively wrong with creating a story about a toxic romance. That alone is perfectly fine. That alone can lead to some fantastic dramas and scenarios, like the incestuous relationship between Cersei and Jaime in Game of Thrones. The problem is when you make a toxic romance and instead of depicting it as a horrendous relationship that no one would ever want, you depict it as some kind of exciting, scandalous relationship. That's the fucking problem here. When you paint it in some kind of positive, healthy light. You see how this pink hair bitch is constantly getting harassed by this guy? That's supposed to be exciting and romantic to us. It's fucking disgusting, man! Pardon my little rant, I'm sorry about that. This entire webcomic is beyond exhausting, so I'm just gonna wrap this up with the final checkpoint on my list. Okay, we're moving on to chapter 18 or so. Yes, I just skipped all the way to chapter 18. We were originally hanging around chapter 7 for specific elaborations, but now we're here. Because I I'm trying to cut all the fat out of this garbage. Boys, I want to make sure you know that this comic is like 99% fat to cut through in order to find some substance to pick apart. I need to make that really clear. I'm giving you guys a super shortened, abridged retelling of this slog of a story. I'm skipping through a lot just so I can bring you guys to the most important parts. Everything between the talking points and skipping around I'm doing in this video is actually saving you from realizing how dull and slow and boring this effin' manga is. In between all the significant bits worth analyzing, it's non-stop second hand embarrassing bullshit. It's intentionally dragged out melodrama like I said, with really clunky dialogue between these plastic ass Barbie dolls. The entire time you're scrolling and wading through this crap, 95% of the time you are constantly, instinctively shouting out loud, bro, who cares? Move on! Anyway, around that time we get introduced to a new cuck lord called Jihan or something like that. Honestly, I, the name could be totally wrong. I don't know, I don't care, it doesn't matter. You can already guess what this dude's purpose in the narrative is. The guy pulls up on pink hair bitch and is like, Young soul, are you still not over your ex-husband? And then... Uh, before the pink hair bitch can say anything, the Jihan dude is like, he basically willingly wants to be a cuck, okay? The guy goes, you can use me, young soul. You can forget about him by dating me. Of course, it's time to hit the final reason on my checklist and one of the worst checkpoints on the list. Reason number 10, jarring contrived love triangles. How can you have a melodramatic cookie cutter romance without one? Oh no guys, look, she's dating another man just to distance himself from this creep ex-husband guy. What will happen next? I can't imagine what... I, okay, look, I, I can't even make fun of this anymore. Like I said, I'm pretty exhausted with this by now. Guys, this is, this is my stopping point. Let me explain something quickly here. When I stumbled into this piece of trash, I was already aggravated by this garbage, but I still wanted to see how bad and aggressively generic it could get. And lo and behold, this thing has gotten as bad as I could possibly tolerate it. And it's honestly impressive how it straight up goes point from point on generic K-romance tropes. 
Whereas many of the webcomics on Webtoon Canvas are very clearly built with passion, this entire webtoon legit feels like it was built on a friggin' assembly line. This garbage webtoon does have more content and is still going as of the time of this recording, but as for me, I hit my limit. I can only tolerate reading this garbage up to like chapter 25, just to make sure I didn't miss any of the terribleness that emanates from this hackneyed bile. You might think you want to try reading this because you think this could be a so bad it's actually enjoyable to read type thing, but it's not. This comic is not even that. There is, with no form of hyperbole in what I am saying, one of the most most generic things I have ever seen in my life. The only remarkable thing about this, ironically enough, is that this is so intensely unremarkable that it carries damn near every trope of an unremarkable drama, dumped into one bloated, watered down, stretched out, flavorless stew of shit. This comic is the ultimate embodiment of every single thing wrong with webtoon romance. And that is why my irresistible ex sucks. That's all there is to it, boys. We'll see you next time. And since we've reached the end of the video, you know what it's time for. It's time for the Patreon Roll Call. My $10 supporters are... Sindrin7, Stormy Knight, Duke Dragon Heartfire the 10th, Elimations, Joseph Vincent, and Procrastinator Dave. And let's not forget our $5 supporters. Zephyr Zodiac, Dark Damien, Dragonlight Z, Elijah Holland, Phydra, Human Coffee, Jambo J, Justin Ciccone, Travis, Wolfman, Yumi with a Gun, and Sping Bing Squam Pants. If you'd like to be in the credits as well, catch me on Patreon.com slash BlacklightJack. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.